Well, I think we'd better go out here to the other shop. I haven't seen Nicholas for a while. Let's try to figure out what he's up to today. Come on in. So what are you doing? I haven't seen Get, you all day. Getting ready to balance this crank. <laughs> that doesn't look like a balancer. Well, it was on the balancer earlier. Yeah, so why you got it in the lathe? Well, I'm gonna turn down the counterweights. So, well, I started balancing this the other day. I went through and matched up all of our pistons and our rods to get everything within, you know, Right. A close tolerance on balance. So went through, matched all of the small ends of the connecting rods, you know, took the lightest small end and matched it with the heaviest piston okay. and pin assembly. Um, got all of those matched up, had to pay attention to the right and left pistons that we have. You're I also talking about the, the reliefs in the top of the piston yeah, for the, the valves. The reliefs in the top of the piston because the intake has to be on the right side on one and then the left side and on another in okay. the same bank. And then I went through and I also matched up, you know, on each rod throw of this crankshaft, there's four throws, each with two connecting rods. I wanted to get the rotating component of our weight here within a close tolerance. So I matched up the heaviest big end connecting rod with the lightest big end connecting rod okay. and kind of went through and matched them all up so that we're within a pretty close tolerance there as well. When it was all said and done, I have all of our rod throws, so the rotating component mm -hmm. of the weight matched within under half a gram. I have all of the piston and small end connecting rods matched within 0.7 grams. So we're well within. And that was all without doing any No grinding. grinding. You know, we have some pretty high dollar components here. Uh, they're well manufactured to a close tolerance mm -hmm. right out of the box. So I was able to just do that mixing and matching and get well within a gram okay. on each one. Okay, that sounds real good. So then I set up our bob weights and side note, I decided to make new weights on here. Uh, just took a little bit of time on the lathe and turned those out because I was tired of using the what we believe was cam <laughs> lobes that were cut up from the last guy who we bought these bob weights from used. I didn't even realize that's what that was until you started working with that mm -hmm. and looking at them a little closer and it's like, wait a minute, these are just camshaft lobes yeah. all cut up. But anywho, set up all our bob weights after we had weight matched everything and we went over to the, the crankshaft balancer and we spun it mm -hmm. and it came out I think about 220 grams on the left side, the front mm -hmm. of the crank, and just under 200 on the right side, right? Yeah, so quite a bit. It's a pretty big hole to drill if yeah. you wanted to just drill a hole. Because yeah. typically in the videos that we've done in the past, we've ended up being able to just drill a hole in the counterweight and get everything within mm -hmm. balance. Well, that's too much material to remove here. So what we're actually gonna do is before we drill any holes, we're gonna start out by turning down the outer diameter of this front counterweight here and the back counterweight here. Real quick, I wanted to mention that today's video is sponsored by PDS Debt. 
Just a few short years ago, my wife and I were living off of a single income while she was finishing up nursing school, and I'd be lying if I said the bills weren't starting to pile up between a car payment, student loan payments, and the increasing credit card balances. It can be easy to find yourself in some tough financial circumstances. It doesn't matter whether you found yourself there because of some bad financial choices, like buying race car parts that you can't afford on a credit card, or if your debt came from an investment in your education or equipment for a new business. Either way, it can weigh on you, but PDS Debt is here to help. PDS Debt has customized options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. Everyone with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies, and there is no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit are accepted. Maybe you find yourself making payments on your debt month after month, but the balances just aren't going down. And if that's the case, this program is for you. PDS Debt provides options that consolidate your debts into one low monthly payment, save thousands in interest and fees, and pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. They're a top-rated company on Google and have an a rating on the Better Business Bureau. PDS Debt cares about helping you get out of debt. Check out all of their reviews and see how many mention PDS Debt employees by name. It's incredible. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash Jim's Machine. It only takes 30 seconds. That's pdsdebt.com slash Jim's Machine. pdsdebt.com slash Jim's Machine. Now let's get back to the video and see if we can get this crankshaft balanced. Now why is this crank so far off? Well, this is an aftermarket crank that was not designed to be used with these components necessarily. We have custom pistons. Mm -hmm. We started with a 413 cubic inch block, a uh, big mm -hmm. block Mopar, and we bored it out to 4.255. Most people who are using this crankshaft are starting with a 440 block that's already 4320 okay. bore diameter, and they're probably boring that already on top of it. Yeah, so significantly long, larger piston mm -hmm. and heavier piston. Yeah, so in short, they probably leave some extra meat on here so you can balance it anyway, but it's also probably more designed for um, bigger pistons than we have that would be heavier in turn. I think the crank, when I bought it, it said it's made for either a 2300 or 2350 gram bob weight, and our bob weight came out 2183. So each rod throw there, it's expecting, you know, 200-ish grams heavier. Okay. That's what we're yeah, going to do. I guess here. it's better to be able to take it off than have to add it on. We marked our point here where the imbalance is according to the balancing machine. It's about right here and you can see it's not perfectly centered on the counterweight. Mm -hmm. The nice thing when you're drilling a hole is you're going to be able to drill at the exact point of imbalance and remove material exactly at that point. Right. The problem with turning it here is we're going to be taking material off of this entire counterweight and it's not actually only removing weight at the point of imbalance. So we have to be careful not to take too much and the reason being, we'll kind of show this here on the computer, this is kind of a, a, a drawing of our counterweight if we took a 25 thousandths depth of cut um, and turned that off of there. And what you see is this line here shows us our point of imbalance that we measured on the balancer. But when we turn this material off, this gray section, it's actually effectively removing the mass that's turned at this point here. That's the center of mass of this section. And what that does, when we remove weight over here, instead of removing weight over here, is it starts to throw our point of imbalance this direction and there comes a point where if we've removed too much weight off this counterweight we're going to throw it off of the counterweight and we're not going to be able to remove any more weight because there is no material no, out there no material to even remove it from so it's like okay how do we know how much we can remove so i built a excel sheet <laughs> to i took my engineering knowledge <laughs> and I built an Excel sheet that'll kind of give us a ballpark idea of how much we can do. So I'm just showing you this because someday you might have to do this without me for some reason. I hope not. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you here. Come on. Don't you want to be done with sweeping the floor? <laughs> sweeping the floor is a lot easier. It doesn't strain my brain. Maybe so. 
So the spreadsheet I built takes into account the diameter of the counterweight and the angles that signify as as the crank is turning on the balancer, okay. the starting point of our counterweight, the angular starting point, the point of imbalance, and the angular ending point okay. takes into account the density of the material that we're working with here. Okay. This is a 4340 crank, so we're just using a common density of steel. I have that value programmed in here. But we have to program in those points and then it'll calculate the center of mass depending on how deep of a cut we made, the center of mass mm -hmm. of the piece that we removed. And it'll effectively multiply that or add it um, rather to the point of imbalance and the mass of the point of imbalance. And it'll give us the resulting point of imbalance and the mass of that point so that we can have a kind of estimation before we make a cut. But either way, I think we'll make a couple cuts, then we'll go over there and check it and see if the spreadsheet's yeah, close. Because it's all like... an approximation. Nothing here, it's not taking into account the chamfer on the edge of the counterweight. It's not taking into account the radius on the leading and tailing edge mm -hmm. of the counterweight. So everything we're doing here is kind of an approximation. Okay. But you gotta, you gotta start somewhere and try to get as close as you can. So let's go through and program in these values using the lathe here. Okay. So if you want to come around here, we're going to start with the front counterweight. I think while we have it in the machine, we'll also turn the trailing, you know, the backside counterweight as well. But over there, when we spun this on the balancer with all of our bob weights on the crank to simulate the mass of our, the rest of our components, we found that where it wants us to remove material is right where this mark is approximately. And it wants 220 grams removed here, which would be roughly a four inch deep, three quarter inch diameter hole. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. My program needs to take into account uh, angular position of the start of the counterweight here. It needs to take into account the angular position where we need to remove weight. And it needs to take into account the angular position of where the counterweight ends. So I'm using the spindle encoder that kind of tells us what position the spindle is at here on the lathe to get those points. So I'm just gonna run this in close here. I don't wanna crash anything. Okay. And you can see as I turn the crankshaft here, if you look up here on the screen, it's really small, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it's telling us the angular position, you know, 0 to 360 degrees of where the spindle is relative to the cutting tool. I'm not going to take into account this curvular, curvular, <laughs> circular, <laughs> holy cow. I'm not going to take into account the curved part here, but I've run that tool to where it's right about at the point where the counterweight is straight across there. And a reading on the lathe is uh, 303 degrees. We'll rotate on around. And I've lined it up approximately with the point of imbalance that we measured earlier. What is it, 359.6, 7? Now I'm gonna rotate around to our trailing edge here, approximately. Again, I'm not taking into account the curved part here on the end. So that's where I'm talking about, it's kind of an approximation, mm -hmm. but this is gonna get us close to get an idea of how much mass we're removing. Well, and if you use the same point on the leading edge and trailing edge, it should, should kind be. of equal out anyway. Yeah, because um, and the nice thing about this crank is that the counterweights are a perfect circle. Yeah. They're not cam cut. You'll right. see some where it kind of starts as a circle, but then they have kind of, yeah. you know, different diameters at different points of the counterweight. Anyway, that one rolled over 360. So now we're at 88.37. The way I've written the, the program here, the sheet, I actually have it where zero is the point starting here okay and then you know this is the distance from that point so okay. it's actually the counterweight is approximately 145 degrees across okay. 
and our point of imbalance is 57 degrees in from that. You know, okay. That's about, from here to here is about 57 degrees. From here all the way around to here is about 145. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Now I already know just from the intuition and what I drew on that picture there that I was trying to show on the computer. As we're turning weight, we're effectively removing weight over here. So we're gradually, the more and more cuts we make, it's gonna spit our imbalance this direction. Okay. We wanna stop at a point where we can drill a hole, hopefully a single hole right on the counterweight here towards the edge and get everything within balance. Okay. But we're gonna see how that comes out. We it's, may end up drilling more holes if we have to. We're gonna see if you really did learn anything when you was in school. Pretty much, I mean, it was almost, I was probably learning this like eight years ago, so <laughs> I haven't used it in a while. But anyway, okay, if we take one 25 thousandths cut, talking to some people who kind of gave me some recommendations on the tooling to use and depth of cut, mm -hmm. feeds and speeds, all that kind of stuff, they said that's a good place to be. It is an interrupted cut, so it's going to be, I don't know how it's going to do, but. Well, that's it. We've never done anything like this before. But if I take a 25 thousandths cut, we're effectively removing, well, not effectively, we're removing 36 grams, but the point that we're removing it at, again, is not where it actually needs to be removed. Yeah. And with one cut, it's actually only going to shift the point of imbalance a couple degrees. So rather than being at our 359, it would be at 357 on the reading on the lathe here, somewhere in that range. So you can see it's, it's barely kicked it over at all. So obviously one cut, we'd okay. be fine. Four cuts. At that point, we would have taken a hundred thousandths off the diameter, right? Is that right? No, 200 thousandths off the diameter. Yeah. Which would have been about 144 grams. And at that point, our point of imbalance would be at 341. So four cuts, we're still doing okay. It's gonna be over here. As the point of imbalance gets further away from the center of mass mm -hmm. of where we're removing mm -hmm. material, it's kind of an exponential well, thing. Well, that's why I was gonna ask you if that's more of an expo exponential thing that all of a sudden it's gonna jump clear it, off the side. It may us. not be truly, truly exponential, but that's what it's doing. The farther you get away, okay. the bigger the, um, the farther it's gonna throw yeah. it angularly. Yeah. You know, actually I have this programmed for 190 grams and not 220, so it's not quite gonna be what we were talking, but still at seven cuts, we'd be about that 311 point. And when you go to eight cuts, I think is where it kicks it off the, yeah. At, at eight cuts, it's kicked it off the counterweight. Okay. And you'd be needing to remove weight over here. If we do that, our only option is to go back and add a slug of yeah, tungsten. And we want to avoid that if we can. Yeah. But, it, but that is an option. It's an option if we get yeah. there. And, and what that would be doing is just, again, pulling that center point yeah. back in onto the weight. Yeah. So with that said, we know we can cut up to 175 thousandths depth of cut, mm -hmm. which is 350. Matt, multiplying by two is really hard sometimes. <laughs> Good thing you got all a this, cameraman here. All this trig and blah, 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 that's easy stuff. But you multiply, I, I seriously, when I was in college, I, I was the kid who like, if you had two times two, like I would type it into the calculator just to make sure that it's right. <laughs> Cause you're taking a, t you don't want to get something dumb like two times two wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is why people hate engineers. <laughs> what do you think? Should we take half? Should we take three cuts? T take half of it. Okay, so take if we were going to take seven cuts, let's take three cuts. Okay. And then we'll go to the back side and we'll do kind of halfway. Half on it. And then we'll throw it back on the balancer. Yeah. Throw the bob weights back on, which can introduce a little bit of error, but. But let's go halfway first and verify that this really is going to work because it looks like voodoo and witchcraft to me. It is voodoo and witchcraft. <laughs> I'm going to program the machine here because this is a CNC. We're not going to do it manually with the controls. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. 
I am gonna run coolant when I cut this. I don't know if, I assume that's the right thing to do if you have the ability to run coolant, but um, if you know more about doing this type of machining, you let me know. Tool number one, offset number one, spindle direction three. I'm gonna set a max spindle RPM of 300 RPM because I don't think we really want this thing spinning any faster than that. We're using the speeds and feeds for this insert type that I have, which comes out to, um, with this material, we're thinking about a 510 surface feet per minute starting point. Um, and I'll have to program in the diameters here, but we're also thinking of a feed rate of around 12 thousandths per revolution. And when it's all said and done, that's gonna be spinning in the range of like 275 RPM here. And I think that's gonna be a good place to start. Let me know when you're ready to make that first cut. I wanna be ready and I wanna be there to watch. <laughs> okay. Well, let me go through and program this and then we'll cut to making the cut. All right, so I've got this programmed in. We're starting at 7,325. We're making 325 thousandths cuts, which takes our diameter down to 7,175. The counterweight is about 1.2 inches, so I set our cut length as 1.3, just to have a little extra. When the program's over, it'll bring the tool all the way back in the X direction, and it'll bring the tool one inch over from our offset okay. in the Z direction, which is about where I have it right now. Okay. So it's not gonna go back and crash the tailstock and drop the crank and so on. Okay. Or it might. You hope. It shouldn't. <laughs> Let's do it. Ready, Dad? I guess so. Okay, that array scared me. was kind of scary but <laughs> yeah that was beyond scary <laughs> see how it did uh, what do you got I'm pretty happy with that yeah I think that turned out exceptionally well for our first time kind of sharp on the edges but that's, that's to be expected that's machining <laughs> really really close you can see some like waviness mm -hmm. almost like it's vibrational type stuff. But not bad. But not bad. I've, I've had stuff I've done with inter <clears throat> interrupted cuts before that was way worse than that. Yeah. So I think we don't worry about changing our insert speed or, you know, our, our not insert speed, our speeds and feeds at all because I like the surface finish. It's uh, just cosmetic at this point. Yeah. And cosmetically, it looks pretty dang good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's mark... Um, where we thought the imbalance would be. So 350.8-ish. So what you're marking there is where you think the imbalance is gonna be now? That's where my spreadsheet says we should have somewhere in the range of 147 grams to remove. So maybe let me mark 147 on that as well. And then the idea is you're gonna put this ore in a balancer and check that. We're gonna check that and see if it's anywhere close. Okay. Just to see if we feel confident that we can take three or four more cuts. Yeah. And still be on the counterweight. <laughs> so now, let's program it for the back counterweight. Yeah. Okay. So let's run over here. 
Oops, that's the wrong axis. <laughs> Usually I have this over here though, and I'm doing things with my left hand, yeah. so it's kind of different. Okay, so one thing is with our tailstock set up here, I can't traverse the, what do you call this, cross slide, or, mm -hmm. you know, I can't move the cross slide much more than about an inch further that direction. And I think I kind of zeroed a point like right there that I was calling my zero point. But let's run this in close. Okay, but now we need to find our, our positions of the counterweight starting point, position of counterweight ending point, and posi position of the imbalance. Our starting point here, about 123.8. Okay, our imbalance that we marked the other day it's in the range of 209 and our ending point 271 the imbalance that we had yesterday was 196 grams so one cut would kick us over a couple degrees two cuts a couple more degrees once you get to seven cuts on this side you are off the counterweight okay so I, again, six is probably where we want to start, but let's go three cuts okay. and then we'll check it and see. Three cuts theoretically is going to put the counterbalance at 217 degrees the way the lathe reads, which is like hardly, hardly moved at all from where we thought it was. So again, as you, as you turn more and more off, the point of imbalance is going that way but the point that we're removing weight is kind of staying right here in the center of the counterweight. So as you get farther away, it starts to throw the imbalance even farther off. But I feel pretty good about taking three cuts yeah. here. It'll run into a point that's 0.1 inches away okay. in both the X and the Z, and then I'll start making our passes. So it'll make four passes without touching. Actually on the fourth pass, it might just skim it, and then I'll make our three passes to turn it down just like it did over here. Sound good? That sounds like a plan. Should give you those first passes where there's be cutting air. Time to kind of look at it, make sure it's where it needs to be. And you've been paying attention so I can turn you loose with this machine, right? Sure, no problem. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Because the next one, I'm not helping you. You know, <laughs> over the last five years as I've been learning the machine shop, <laughs> That's how you acted. You <laughs> acted like you show me something in there one time and I should know how to do it. You should, because you're a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, well, let's cut it. I'm gonna take my spot over here on the end out of the way. Okay. So we'll make four cuts again. Three without touching at all and a fourth possibly touching. <laughs> Impressed. Seems about the same surface finish. Yeah. When you look at it in the light, there's kind of some funny wavy looking Waviness stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, if you see the light going across there, you yeah. can see the wave in it. Yeah, so it's definitely uh I don't know what you would even call that finish, but it's not gonna hurt anything we're doing here. Well that side to me was scarier because it's on the tailstock end and things yeah. are it's not gripped by a chuck, it's a live center in the yeah. back of it and it's just kind of nerve-wracking i like these chips that it's making they're obviously hot they're bright blue and a nice rigid one inch long tip or so yeah chip chip 
Tip? Chip. Tip. Whatever it is. Well, let's mark where that one was supposed to be. So we're expecting our imbalance to be about there. We're also expecting maybe somewhere in the range of 120 grams. Okay. So you know what time it is? It's lunchtime. That's right. In fact, it's past lunchtime. I know, it's been lunchtime for 48 <laughs> minutes now. So we're going to take lunch. We'll go over to the balancer. We'll put bob weights on. We'll spin it and maybe see if we can come yeah. back and take three more cuts on each one probably and then yeah. start drilling. So we'll get all this set back up. We're going to get all the bob weights on just like we had them before and then we should be able to spin it. Okay. 27 and a half. I'd say we're pretty dang yeah, it close. Has a and this is where you... This is where it was. This is where it was, and this is where you thought it should be? This is where I thought it should be. We thought we'd need to do 147 grams still. This is measuring 159. Wow. So we are 10 grams off yeah. there, but that's, that's I, I pretty dang you, accurate. Yeah, I think you're... Uh... But let's check the other side. Five... I mean, again, that moved such a slight amount that it's hard to tell. And the, the uh, resolution on the balancer is not exceptional. So this is where it was, and this is where you thought it should this be? This is where it was. This is where we thought it should be. But again, it's such a small amount, and without having a perfect way to tell. Yeah. Pretty close on that one too, I'd say. And what about the? Hard 24 grams is what it says we need to remove and we thought we would need a hard 20 left. Wow, I think you're nailing it. I think between the sources of error that we have, bob weights going on slightly differently, which should not matter. Difference in my value for the density of what I put in my calculator versus the density of this crank and the fact that I did not take into account the, the what did I call it earlier, the curvular? The curvular. The, the curvular crankshaft. edge of the leading edge and trailing edge of the counterweights, and the fact that there was a slight chamfer on there, mm -hmm. and which is not as obvious now. But yeah, it's like pretty dang. Yeah, you're, you're on the I'm right track. I'm confident enough that we can go, probably go to where we think we're gonna be yeah. able to do one more hole. Well, let's get it back in the lathe. Okay. Originally, we thought we could have taken a total of seven 25 thousandths cuts. With my math here again, at this point, we had already taken our three cuts. If we take four cuts, it's going to, again, we figured out, kind of throw our point of imbalance kind of right in this area, mm -hmm. which is probably a pretty good spot to be able to drill. Yeah. If we go five cuts right now, is going to toss it out into outer space. Yeah, we don't want that. So we're ending up doing what what you we thought we thought. would do from the beginning. But again, it's better to sneak up on it than yeah. and have it work out than to make a mistake. And it may still well, it may still still screw us. Yeah. But I think the results over there again, it's hard because with the first few cuts here, it was only shifting it a small amount. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite gotten to that exponential point where it mm -hmm. really starts to throw the imbalance off, but it did what intuition said it should do. Yeah. And that gives me confidence to go through and do mm -hmm. this. So I, I didn't like the way this counterweight looked because it was just too perfect. So I decided to go ahead and crash the tool bit into it, traversing over manually. See, when you run this thing CNC, you don't crash. 
<laughs> Knock on wood. Well, yeah, just <laughs> just wait. But uh, yeah, uh, I had a I had traversed in close to the counterweight here. Wasn't really thinking and started moving this way and crashed my tool into there. So took care of the took care of that insert. That insert probably needed changed anyway. Yeah. So now we got to do a little more setup. Um, of course, when we're not filming is when I do something dumb, but just a uh, cosmetic oopsie, I guess. <laughs> so we got our mishap out of the way. <laughs> Hopefully that could have been a lot worse than yeah, it was. That's so, the worst thing you do here. You're doing good. But yeah, we got this one turned down. We ran a little bit more coolant flow than we did. And rather than the chips coming off all dark blue, mm -hmm. like they're real hot, whoop, like they're real hot, they came off a little shinier. So I think we were keeping the insert a little bit cooler that yeah. time. So that side's done. Careful with that. I know. That point is where we are hoping Where'd my marker go. You know, don't even say whatever you're about to say, because it's a lie. <laughs> You were giving me all kinds of static about me losing my tools. Well, this ain't a tool. This is a marker. Sure, it's a tool. Let's hope that that is where we will be drilling a hole. It's still a pretty big hole, around 85 grams. Now, I'm going to go in, program everything over here. Luckily, there's not any counterweights further right that I'll have to, you know, that I won't like the looks of and need to put a cosmetic... Flying. It's a birthmark. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> let me get all that set up and calculated here and we'll cut back when I, when I know what we're doing there. Confused myself. I think I figured the math out again. I think it was because I had in my head that we were only going to take six cuts on the back, but maybe, I don't know. If we take four cuts here, it'll take our imbalance to about right there on the counterweight. That's a really good spot. It's a pretty good spot. Okay, so that would be taking it down to the same diameter as we took the front counterweight down. Okay. If we try one more cut after that, blows off into outer space. <laughs> we don't want that. But yeah, we'll take our four cuts to bring that down to that diameter, throw it back on the balancer. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. At this point, we were expecting our imbalance to be around 29 grams on that side and at 133, which would be a real easy spot to drill, especially if it's only 30 grams, that's an easy hole. So we've got our point marked on the left side, we've got our point marked on the right side, we can put it on the balancer. <laughs> See how we did. Okay. One thing that I did not comment on earlier, this is an internally balanced engine. Flywheel is neutral balance. The harmonic damper is neutral balance. I, I can just see comments about, oh, it's 80 grams out because you're not using a weighted flywheel. Yeah. No, that's not. This crankshaft is supposed to be neutral balance when you're done and everything's supposed to be neutral yeah. balance. It's internally balanced. Machinist rant. <laughs> Pretty dang close. I think it's actually a little bit further yeah, this it's, direction. Yeah, it's back this way from where you thought it might be. But not a whole lot. It's no. still pretty, pretty close. And you were thinking 85 and it's 102. So you're yep. 15, 17, that's what you're talking 17 about, 17 different. off. Okay. okay. Let's check the right side, the rear of the crank. That Ooh. one, again, we're not quite as far over 36 36 so we're seven grams off there 
So it's still pretty close. Yeah. Honestly, like, I feel like we could have turned more here. Uh -huh. Do that. Yeah, I don't know I... if we can turn more here. So yeah, not quite. I'm not sure. I don't know if we'll be able to remove any more here. I don't know, looking uh, straight up, that's that's back here. Right, but... It, it starts it's jumping the, so fast. Yeah, it's, the, it's that it jumps so, so yeah. aggressively because the center of mass of what we're removing is still clear yeah. over here. So now that we're so far out, it starts pushing it yeah. more aggressively. But on yeah. this side, I'm pretty confident we can take at least another cut, I think. Anyway, we probably need to call it for the day. Yeah. But pick up tomorrow and I'm impressed. I think the spreadsheet's working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty because dang if, close. Uh, if this hadn't been the first time doing that, you would have made all of those cuts up to this point the first time. Yeah. And at that point, yeah, we'd had to gone back one more time, like we're talking about doing here, but uh, I, I think it's working. So I think last night we ended with saying we were gonna start drilling holes. Did some thinking on it in my sleep. You did some thinking on it. <laughs> Talked to a couple buddies who gave me some advice. And we went ahead and lined up the laser so that we can actually get a good reading. Right. You know, a more accurate reading here. So let's just look again. On the left hand side here, where'd I put my marker? You know, you have a lot of trouble with that. Our calculation said we were gonna be somewhere in this range, 85 grams. About in that range for 104-ish grams. Okay, on the rear here, it's telling us right about here for 37 grams. This side we weren't quite as close as I thought we were going to be. I thought it'd be thrown off a little bit further. Bird just flew into the window. <laughs> a suicidal bird. Dummy. <laughs> 104 grams is still like an inch and a half deep, three quarter inch diameter hole yeah. right here. But I think we're to the point where another cut is going to throw it off the counterweight. Yeah. Back here, I'm kind of thinking another cut would probably get us pretty dang close to being in balance on that side. Yeah. But at least in my experience with this machine, when you take material off the heavier side, it kind of changes the numbers on the lighter yeah. side. So you've kind of been already probably playing with fire by doing both at once. Rather than drilling a hole here, we started kind of thinking, if this is the center of where it wants us to remove 104 grams. We're thinking about doing some grinding on what is actually technically the trailing edge of this crankshaft yeah. as it spins in the motor and grinding some of that material here to get a little bit closer, you know, so that we, mm -hmm. if we drill a hole, it'll be a much smaller hole. Plus by taking material here, if anything, it's going to kick the imbalance point this direction. Yeah. Hopefully, mm -hmm. if 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 we physics, understand, yeah, if yeah. we understand the physics of what we think we understand here, right, um, and actually what you understand, because this is more your thing than mine. Well, how would you not know this? You have forty years experience, and I'm just the dumb kid. <laughs> Sometimes the dumb kids know more than the old man. <laughs> and maybe we just kind of follow the same shape and take it back. So let's start with doing some grinding on this. We'll put it back on the machine, see where we're at, then decide if we got to go back in the lathe or if we got to yeah. do more grinding or, you know. So we kind of ground off, you know, maybe roughly a quarter of an inch like we had marked out, but let's spin it and see what we got. Before we were 104 grams at this position, right here where this line is, even though it kind of came off. Now we are 
probably about three quarter of an inch back this direction, but we're only down to 20 or 76 grams rather. So almost 30 grams lighter, but we've shifted it back onto the counterweight, which was our goal. So I think we can actually do a little bit more grinding over here. On the back side, it has kept our imbalance in nearly exactly the same spot. It's right across our line there, but rather than 37 grams, we now have 43 grams. I think we need to go grind a little bit more over here. And maybe we're talking about just kind of taking this flat to match this other counterweight. Okay, so we went eight launch and I ground on this a little bit more, but you can only show so much grinding in a video. <laughs> it's all the same. But what we did this time is just took more material off there and brought it back kind of to be the same shape as the second counterweight over, just kind of straight out. Let's spin it and see where we're at. Okay. If anything, it's starting to kick it. Kick it back away from the... Back away. From the edge. I might spin that a time or two again just to make sure. But we're still, we're 40 grams there. So that, that side has not really changed much as we've changed the left side. But this one, it has gone ahead and kicked it back further in towards the counterweight. Which is a good thing, isn't which it? Which is a good thing. And I'm hopeful that we can put it back in the lathe and do one more cut and send it you know, back towards mm -hmm. this edge again and then either do more grinding or drill a hole and be done. Okay. And same thing on this side, I think we can take another cut and it'll, again, send it back this way. Yeah. Um, but but not, maybe get us closer. But not send it off the edge. We won't send it off the edge. I'm almost a thousand percent confident in that. So we went through, we made our cut on the front and the rear counterweight again. It was just a single cut this time. And our hope is that our imbalance, when we go back over to the balancer, will match this. We came up about 30, hopefully 39 grams right at this point here. And 22 grams right there is where we think we're going to need to put a hole. So on the front side here, the mark we thought we were going to be at is right here, and we thought 39 grams mm -hmm. approximately, according to my spreadsheet. Our point of imbalance is actually right about here. So it's not as far out as I thought it was going to be, weirdly. I don't know, I don't know what the difference there is. I mean, it's still close. Yeah but it says 40 grams. So, so we're right there on yeah. what we thought it'd be. Now on the rear side, we thought we'd be here 
with 22 grams and we're just a little bit further over with 21.8 grams. Huh. So at this point, if we use a three quarter inch diameter drill, that's a 710 thousandths deep hole over here approximately and a 390 thousandths deep hole over here approximately. Okay. I say we go into the other shop, we drill both those holes, come back, put it on. Hopefully it'll be right there. Hopefully it'll be right there. Well, yeah, it, it'll be close enough at that point that we can spin this up faster and be a little more accurate mm -hmm. with it. Okay. I think the next one we do though, I feel like I'll be able to use that spreadsheet with 98% confidence, confidence yeah. that if it says we can do seven cuts, we do seven cuts yeah. right off the rip. So here, 40 grams. Here we need 21.8, about 710 and 390. Go to the cut other shop. Okay. So we're gonna zero that. Okay. And eventually we will have to drill 710 thousandths deep. Here. With that bit. Yeah. That's the wrong gear. That'd get it done in a hurry. What a mess. Yeah. Okay, 390 is our depth here. Okay. Kind of deburr those edges a little bit, go spin it. If anything, we should be light still. Yeah. Hope a little, hopefully, it's close enough that it'll spin up nice and we can do a little touch up over there. If we have to drill one more hole on each side, I'd still be happy with yeah. it. But what we were trying to avoid is 30 holes. Yeah. And to get this much material off, you'd have had 30 holes. <laughs> yeah, you would have had 30 <laughs> holes. We could even do the, if it needs a little touch up, we could even do it on the next yeah. counterweight over just to make it look a little nicer maybe, but yeah. I think it's gonna come out good. So we'll cut back over there when we're ready to spin it again. And I enabled high speed mode, so hopefully hopefully we see it <laughs> spin up to 750, but if not, I guess we have more work or to do. Or make sure you got that camera rolling, maybe when it comes off there. That's good news. Yeah. That belt's right in over again. So the fact that it sped up to the higher speed means we're within at least 15 grams on either side at the radius of those uh, outer counterweights. Measuring. Okay. That's not good. No, it's not good. We're still on the counterweight here, but we're off the edge here. So how'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I guess that hole's too big. The math doesn't math though. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make sense. Unless changing it here, drilling this one changed it enough too. Well, now we gotta think a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we're highly confused. It's kicked it off the counterweight, which we've been trying to avoid this whole time, but this but is now. part of the job. This is part of what happens. This is balancing can either go really smoothly or it can 
confuse the crap out of you. Yeah, and for some reason, up to this point, it's been going very smooth. Yeah. And all of a sudden, now we're confused. So, if we add about 10 grams of clay back to our hole, it starts to pull the imbalance. It's still saying we need to remove 10 grams, but it's starting to pull it back towards the counterweight. If we get up to about 20 grams in that location where we drilled the hole, and the backside is staying the same, it's saying we need to remove a little more weight um, right from the where hole we, we drilled, drilled which yeah. is logically what we expected yeah. to happen on both sides. So that time it didn't kick up to high speed because it's over 20. But now it's saying at 25, which is darn near our hole, we need to remove 24 and a half grams. <laughs> that does not make sense. So let's pull this clay out. How do you get that out? Uh, going with my knife. Now again, it's wanting it removed a little bit over that way. So if we remove it here, it is going to want to kick that direction a little bit. But give me that clay. It says we need to remove 24 and a half grams. Well, that's 20. So less than it says we need to remove. And we spin it again. But now it wants 7 grams removed in outer space. So we're going to do some checking here. Maybe even put the calibration arbor on the machine and see yeah, if it's let's, calibrated. Let's go back to square one and make sure calibration on the machine is right. Double check everything we have done here. Try to figure out what's going on because it is, it is just not making sense. But more than likely what we're going to have to do is start putting a little bit of weight back in this hole yeah. with the welder, which is not what I wanted to do, but it is an accepted method of, if you, if you have a crank that's been balanced for a different, you know, yeah. different components and you want to rebalance it, but somebody's already drilled holes where you need to, you know, where you need it filled, people fill them in with the welder and that's Go part on from of, there. It's an accepted method, so. So whenever we've been doing balancing in the past, and I talked about this earlier in the video, mm -hmm. we always start with the heavier side first. At this point, it's saying it's heavier as far mm -hmm. as needing weight removed over here on the mm -hmm. right, right hand side. It's wanting it removed very close to where our original hole is. Right. So we're just gonna go into our original hole and drill a little bit, a smaller diameter, but kind of drill a little bit into mm -hmm. that and see how things change and if it, where it throws us. That is hard. saying over here it's getting ever so slightly less but the position is not changing at all Okay, so we went ahead and welded up this hole <laughs> to try and get back to square one on that side. Yeah. It's not what we wanted to do, but let's see what that did for us. So spin her up, let's see. And of course we're back to low speed mode because it's we're definitely so more out. than 15 grams out. Okay. <laughs> 
So, wants 40 grams right here. So here's what I think happened. It wanted 40 right here, but we took 40 right here, and that just kicked it that well, direction. And, the, and this changes. Yeah, I think because the back end was off too, because we, we drilled where it told us to drill. I know, but before that, remember I had marked closer this way? Yeah. I wonder if there was some, something got twisted on the, well, like that, I wonder if the encoder got twisted or something like that. That could be. So, what if we grind more of the front leading edge? Well, from what we've talked about that, if we grind more of the front leading edge, that will throw, It'll throw, throw things back, back this, this way. way. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's grind some more off that front edge. And then if we have to, and it's throwing that back, we can drill back this way. Okay. And on our backside, we're our backside. <laughs> we're, uh, We need four at our hole that we've already been already been working on. Working on. So, you know, I wonder if maybe something did. It, it just makes me wonder because I feel like, remember, again, I'm going off my math on my spreadsheet, mm -hmm. which is an approximation, but I remember it wanted it closer over here. Yeah. Or that's where it told me we were going to need to remove 40 grams. Yeah. And then somehow or another, we ended up back this way a little bit, which I thought was kind of weird because it was further in than I expected it to be. But at that but it point, happens. yeah, at that point you thought that's what it was. So I think we'll do some grinding here, make that look pretty again. You know, not, not my favorite thing to have had to do because we, <laughs> this thing was coming out super yeah. cosmetically pleasing to me. Yeah. But let's go eat because once again, it's time it's to eat. It's another time, another <laughs> meal time. And then let's do some grinding there, but yeah. How many right? grams? Four, 38 grams. Back to the 38 again. It, it's literally almost the exact amount we took here. Yeah. Because we took 40 grams yeah. here. But if it truly had wanted it here and we took it here, it makes sense that it yeah, kicked that it, it out over kicked here. it out clear over here. Yeah. So. That's the only part that does make sense. Yeah, this whole side has been confusing, but... So this will either be a grave mistake or it'll work really good. We got, we had talked back there about just grinding this leading edge because if anything, our center or our imbalance right now is kind of where this mark is, which is real close to where we originally drilled that is now filled in, but it's just ever so slightly this way. So what happened is when we took material off here and we weren't quite in line with our you know, imbalance, it kicked it off the counterweight. So we were talking if we grind this material, if anything, it's gonna kick us further onto the counterweight. But then we're like, why, do we, why are we gonna grind 40 grams off there? Yeah, that's a lot of grinding when we, are, when we can put a hole right on that edge anyway. <laughs> So, I'm glad we ground what we did on that to begin with. Yeah, no, it definitely helped early on. Yeah. Um, but at this point, we thought, let's just drill that same size hole that we drilled earlier that is now filled in. Mm -hmm. Let's drill that as close to the edge of the counterweight as we feel comfortable. So it'll have about a, what do we say, 200 thousandths wide. Mm -hmm area all the way around and uh let's start there start there see what happens if anything theoretically i mean it's real close it's still pretty close to the imbalance but if anything it's going to kick it that way hopefully so Alrighty, 
back on the balancer, bob weight set back up, the encoder's back up, new hole. Old hole. Old hole, cleaned up. So let's run her. I used to think. Whoa, yeah. that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. I used to think spinning the balancer was scary, but I think the lathe scares me a lot more. <laughs> Especially with a crankshaft in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that lathe, when it moves itself like that, it's just so fast and always worried that you don't have something programmed right. Okay. What do we have? We need a little bit more from right here. Okay. When you say a little bit. Five grams. Okay. So five grams almost, almost exactly where we had originally taken it from. Yeah. Which makes sense if, you know. Yeah, because we kicked this hole this direction just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And we need 10. Now the other side is off. No, it's not, is it? Oh, we are right on the edge. We're right on the edge. You'll make it. This kicks back at an angle. So even though we're barely on the edge here, we gain material as we go down deeper here because of that angling off. So we'll be okay. That so, is so weird the way that works. Well, and now I'm thinking well, we took you, too much here. Yeah. Now, now we should have left this a little bit more rather than going as much here before yeah. we evened this side back out. Uh, but we're down to the home stretch of where it's really, this is where it gets finicky. This is where in a production shop, you might call it. Yeah, this is where you'd say it's good enough for a stock that's engine. that's way, well, and this isn't stock, but that's way more, that's way better balanced than most factory crankshafts. Yeah. We, we could maybe, we could maybe even grind that you could, yeah, you, we could grind that down a little bit more, uh, clean that up. Anything on this side of that red line is fair game to clean that up with. Let's very, some, very close. It's going to work. Let's do some grinding. And, and back to this hole that we drilled over here that we ended up filling back up. Something had to have. We, we had to have the encoder. Something slipped on the encoder, or I'm wondering, we were drawing some different marks on there making some comparisons to stuff. I wonder if we erased the wrong mark and when we went over to the other shop to drill that, we used the wrong mark. Yeah. And by we, he means me. <laughs> no, I, we, we were both in on it. We have been here for 47 days. <laughs> it feels that way. <laughs> okay, so walk me through our corrections here. We turned okay. down both counterweights. Turned eight, down, yeah, go ahead. Eight cuts, I think, on them. All uh, based off of your spreadsheet that you came up with, with formulas to do that with. Yep. And we feel confident that that worked. That worked for us. So the next time we do one of these, we'll just go straight to it instead of sneaking up on, on it like we did here. Uh, at that point, we s determined that we needed to drill a hole over here and a hole over here. And we drilled those holes and we came back and put this thing on the balancer and everything went out the window. Uh, all of a sudden it came back and said, we need to drill more over here, and it just did not make sense to us. And we're going to have to go back through those videos ourselves and look at what we did. And viewers, I'm sure, will watch what we did, but I'm pretty sure we drilled the hole in the wrong place. Yeah. Something, something went wrong. We looked at the wrong mark or something slipped because we finally came back, filled that hole back in with weld, Redrilled over here, and all of a sudden things come in right where they need to be. 
And once that was done, we made a small correction here with the grinder and we made a small correction back over here Turn with the grinder. Um, literally, what, five to 10 grams on each one of those. Yep. And this thing has come in. Let's spin it and see. Yeah, this thing has come in just the way it should be. So there it's ramping up for us. That's always a good sign. Tells us that we're close to being in balance. Wow. Point, Point three, three on the left. I'm holding this very awkwardly. Point three right here on this edge. Yeah. And on the right. We're barely on it. Yeah, but we could have taken, what is it, point 0.3 or point 0.2? Point 0.2. Point 0.2, we could have taken point 0.2 grams right off that edge right there and had it perfect. But under one gram is yeah, perfect. Yeah, under one gram, uh, unbelievable. This should be very smooth. Man, it kicked our butts though. Yes, it did. We learned a lot though, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. all we're trying to do is learn a lot. Yeah. So, alrighty. I think next is assembly on this thing. I think that's all you have left is assembly. Which is not a quick thing on an engine like this. It still requires a lot of checks, but I'm happy. Anyway, hopefully, Hopefully this thing's coming together soon. I feel terrible because I told him it'd be done by April. Then I had a baby five weeks earlier than I expected to. You didn't mention to. what year. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I meant April 2026. So sorry, Paul. Um, but you've been great to, to work with on this thing. He's been yeah. super patient and just, I think, tickled to death that we're working on it. And yeah, and I think he'll, it's taken some time to get there, but I think he'll be happy when it's done. For a custom engine like this, our original time frame might have been a little bit of a stretch anyway. Yeah. So that's that. Forgot to mention one last thing on this. We got, we're still going to put the flywheel on right. at this point because we know the crank is balanced. Right. So now we can put the components that are external to the engine on, the damper on the front. Mm -hmm. and. It should be neutral balance, but if it throws anything off, we can make a correction Cor there. We can make a correction on the damper. Same thing on the flywheel. We gotta grind the flywheel. We gotta grind on. the flywheel, resurface it for him, make sure the ring gear is good on it. We can put it on, spin it, make any corrections we need to on the flywheel. That way, any time down the road, if he has to change a flywheel or change a balancer, it doesn't mess up the balance of the engine because everything is internal. For the rotating assembly itself. So that's that.